Okay, you're on your way to your first ever book reading. Ah! How do you feel? Ah! And I want to thank Black Oak Books for hosting me, and of course, Elion uh, Literary Arts for publishing me. Um, and, you know, as Tom said, killer cover, Andrea Young. So <laughs> I've gotten a lot of uh, kudos for that. So that uh, really goes to Andrea. So tonight I'm going to give a little bit um, of a background on how I came to write Lost 1928, and I'll read a couple of brief passages, and then if you have questions afterwards, we can go over those. Okay, so Locke, the setting of my novel, was founded in 1915 after a fire in the nearby town of Walnut Grove destroyed the Chinatown. And there were two warring factions of Chinese in, in that town, so the Zongshan Chinese decided to pick up and found a new town a mile down the road. Locke was meant to be a family town, but because of the laws, it turned into a bachelor town. So Locke 1928 began as my attempt to discover the history of the Chinese in California, and especially the history of Chinese women. Um, through that exploration, I discovered these laws designed to keep the women away and the anti-miscegenation laws, which further complicated the lives of the Chinese men in America. So starting in the 1880s, and this won't be a long history lesson, <laughs> um, the U.S. began passing laws designed specifically to exclude the Chinese. And the legislators were pretty wily with these laws. For example, there was um, a law against carrying a shoulder pole on the sidewalks of San Francisco. There was a tax for people who wore their hair in queues. Um, there was a law that forbade Chinese women from coming over and joining their husbands so that Chinese families could not take root in America. Another interesting law I found um, stated that a white woman who married a foreign-born male would forfeit her citizenship. So all of these were designed to let the Chinese know that they were nothing more than guest workers and to prevent them from permanently settling here and to prevent them from even wanting to permanently settle here. So unfortunately for many of these men, Although getting to America was difficult, returning to China was even more difficult because they were earning a dollar a day in wages. So bachelor communities began to spring up and Locke was one of these places. Um, Locke is famous for being the only all Chinese town in the United States. And in the 1920s, men outnumbered women 20 to 1. The layout of Locke kind of expresses the gap between the ideal of making Locke into a, a family town and the reality of the bachelor town. Um, in the 1920s and up into the 50s, Locke was notorious, Main Street of Locke was notorious for being a place where men would come on the weekends, um, you know, exhausted from a week in the field, and spend their money in the brothels, the speakeasies, and the gambling halls. While Second Street, behind Main Street, um, was where the families lived and where the houses were. The town also decided that unlike in the brothels of Chinatown, the prostitutes in Locke could not be Chinese. So instead they were white. 